Good morning and welcome to another Covnod conference. Now, it's been a very different year for us at Covnod, does it, as many people this year. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to, as I do at all the conferences in previous years, just go through some of the things that have been keeping us busy in the last year. So I thought I'd start off by just looking at last year's conference. Now, obviously, we were in Krygodon um, Community Centre. It's where we've been for several years. Lots of people meeting, lots of people uh, enjoying good talks, face-to-face -face, um, talks. And obviously, this year, it's going to be very different. You'll be glad to know, though, at least you won't have to queue for the, uh, for the lunch, which sometimes got a bit too much. Uh, but then you're going to have to make your own sandwiches. Um, but, you know, we hope that this time next year we'll still be able to get back to this sort of situation because, you know, it's important that we continue to meet one another and discuss some of the important things around biological data. Another thing that was happening, obviously, last year was that, uh, you know, we were in the office and we were able to invite people in. We had uh, Sue Andrew here, one of our volunteers, came in regularly. We started to host meetings in our office in, in a really nice meeting room, um, able to use some of the equipment that we've we've acquired and bought over the period, um, just inviting groups in to use it. And that's sort of not really happening at the moment. One of the things we really treasure about where we uh, where we work is that we're on the Park Menai Business Park in just outside Bangor. It's a great place. Uh, to just have a dog walk at lunchtime, just see a few things, watch nature right on our doorstep. So it's it's a great place to work. There's me preparing for probably a Zoom meeting last year um, in, in our meeting room and obviously, you know, in the office. And this is me this year. So sitting at my desk at home and uh, doing most of my meetings via Zoom and uh, obviously, the thing like the conference today all being done through that. I'm not alone though. Our staff are all pretty much working, uh, you know, from either bedrooms or uh, spare rooms, um, you know, a few in their lounge, you can see that, you know, there's a great variety and we've been very really adaptable during this period. And I, I'm just so thankful that both our staff have been able to be flexible and be able to deal with this, but also that we had really good systems set up um, so that we can all work from home. And I think we've functioned really well. We've kept delivering the services that we would normally do during any period. Uh, and we've been doing it all remotely from our own homes. So this is what the, the office looks like at the moment. We actually did a big raid on it to start off with, with all of, you know, took all the computers home. Uh, we then moved everything into a, a single office and uh, it looks, to be honest, as if it's been looted. But you know, it's still going to be our base in the future. We just think that in the future, we're going to be more flexible about what we do. So one of the decisions that we've made is to close one of our offices. So we've got two neighbouring offices. We've closed that at the moment. And we have the ability to be able to use that space potentially in the future or be more flexible in the way that we use the space in the building that we're in. But I've always said that our office is just really, um, you know, some furniture and some computers. And these are the most important things as far as um, Covnod's concerned. The people I work with, the people that help um, make sure that Covnod runs efficiently and are often the people that you might deal with when you when you contact us. I also put a great deal of thanks as well to our um, our directors, they're all voluntary. We meet four times a year. During the, during the sort of lockdown period, we were meeting monthly just to sort of keep on top of things as they were changing so rapidly. But, you know, these guys have given me great advice. They've kept us on the sort of, you know, strategic direction that we're heading towards. And, you know, they're always there if, if we need them, which is, which is fantastic to have. And of course, all those people out there who are recording wildlife, those people sending us records, individual records, huge spreadsheets and databases, you know, we couldn't do any of this without those people. And we hope that in the future, we're going to be doing a lot more of this, people with bums in the air recording wildlife. And then, of course, 
I've got to have at least one cuddly photo. Um, you know, we mustn't forget that why are we doing this? It's not just about people, it's about wildlife. And, you know, we think we are making a difference in making wildlife data count. We're actually getting it into places so that we can ensure that some of our best wildlife is better protected. At last year's conference, I um, introduced the Covenod strategic plan. So it had four main themes, system support, standards and succession. I'm just going to focus on a couple of these things today, just to sort of give you an update on what we've been doing. And they sort of illustrate some of the changes we've had to make, particularly during this period since March. So I'm going to look at support. So we will continue to support wildlife recorders, giving them opportunities to expand their activities. That's one of the first things we'll look at. So over the last few years, we've been doing uh, a series of events. We normally re release a, an events calendar early on in the year with some things to be confirmed. But generally, we've got a good idea of the sort of things that we would want to do. Some courses, recorders days, a few bio blitzes where we get involved with other organisations and other events as well. So, for instance, this year we were planning an all Wales recorders symposium with the four record centres based in McCuntleth. And we were going to have a whole day of looking at recording techniques and, you know, people would hopefully stay over and the next day they'd go out onto, um, uh, onto various sites to do a bit of recording. And we did quite a lot of the things to start off with, you know, planning these events. We had a couple of events um, uh, very early on um, at the Liverpool Museum, which have been great, great use to of their resources. But basically everything has been cancelled this year. So, you know, we were in a situation where suddenly our calendar on our website was looking like everything has been cancelled. And I've seen that in many places as well. And it's understandable. We weren't trying to, you know, get people together. We really didn't want to get people into the field where it, where it was potentially unsafe. And we were also trying to ensure that people were keeping within their sort of five mile radius as we were being advised at the time. So, you know, we've missed out on a full year, but we hope that in the future years, we're going to be able to do much more of this. Now, to fill that gap, I said to Richard, who you might know is the, is the spider recorder for North Wales, I said to him, look, you know, what can we do? Let's have a look at some of the things that we could do potentially online. And why don't you put together a course that's just looking at common and garden species, you know, the sort of things that you're likely to find in your garden, around your house, and maybe we can introduce that through using an online course and we can invite people to that course and we can hopefully, you know, engage them, get them thinking about recording in their own in their own sort of locality and hopefully passing us records, which is ultimately what we're looking for as well. So we started off with that garden and house spider course and we ended up doing a whole series of courses. The latest one, uh, the art of wildlife photography. We've been using various people to do that, some of our own staff, some people that we've we've, we've got in, like, you know, Tristan Hatton Ellis from NRW, Ben Porter is a wildlife photographer and sort of commentator, uh, broadcaster. And um, we've put together a whole series of courses, which, you know, we're really pleased that we got some support from Celtic Rainforest Wales. They helped to sort of think about the, the sort of themes for the courses and develop them and actually pay for some of the, the staff time as well, which has been fantastic. And then more recently, we've done a couple of how to record uh, courses, which were, you know, um, our own staff, Ashling and Richard, sort of just outlining what you need to do to record certain species groups, birds and fungi, and then having that tacked on with, um, with a, an expert recorder in, in the case of birds, Ian Spence, and for fungi, Dave Winard, um, just looking at the sort of techniques and uh, information required if you're recording those two species groups. And all of these things have all gone on um, YouTube. So we're really pleased. We're nearly at the 100 subscriber mark. We've, you know, had these videos shared with lots of people. A lot of people watch them, you know, straight after the course. And some people are continuing to watch them as we keep pointing people towards them. It's a great online resource, which hopefully will be there forever. So it will not only be a sort of marker for this period to show us, you know, what we'll be doing in 2020, but also, you know, the techniques and the, the things that people are going through in these are going to be so useful to people hopefully going forward. And we might use 
a, a sort of an element of the online course mixed in with sort of face to face meeting as we go forward. So another initiative we launched at last year's conference was Monad of the Month, Monad Amis. And we basically wanted to just highlight a few areas where people might want to go recording because they've, they're very under recorded, few numbers of, of species records at those particular locations. And we tried to sort of, you know, have, give people a bit of choice across, across the North Wales region, just so that they could potentially go there. And we're hoping to build a really good library of these so we can keep pointing people back to them and actually look at how things have changed during that period. Well, again, because of the lockdown, we decided to cancel that. We didn't want to advise people to be going off recording in the field, particularly if they had to go distances beyond that five miles. So we sort of focus people pretty much into trying to record in their in their location. And, you know, their location can be within that five miles. But actually, we were trying at some point to sort of try and dedicate people to thinking about recording in their garden. And one of those initiatives which we actually put together with the four local record centres was a, a, a Wales Garden BioBlitz, which happened on the 30th of May. Um, it's fantastic that we got sort of quite a lot of people joining in, about nearly 300 people joining in, submitting records to the four various record centres. Um, and, you know, actually, although we put in this news article uh, 6,000 6, records, we actually generated well over 7,000. Um, and, you know, the variety of things, you know, people with individual records of species they've seen in their gardens to whole species lists, um, you know, with, with some, you know, really, really good engagement during the day. It was also really well publicised on, on um, social media. So again, it was sort of an experiment of us doing something remotely, seeing if we could generate some interest. And, uh, you know, I think it's the sort of thing that we're likely to do possibly each year. So the other sorts of things that we've been doing, you know, we're continually trying to support recorders by communicating some of the things. So we launched our uh, news, second newsletter in spring, um, and we we're still looking for newsletter articles for this this. Uh, next issue uh, and we've continued to send out our e-bulletin on the record as well every month you know just focusing in on some of the things you might want to look at so in this latest issue you know look out for dotterall um, and and also you know just asking people to look for garden spiders and um, those sort of things are just you know the sort of thing that we'll continue to do so each each month we'll continue to send out on the record and hopefully it will point you towards some of the things you might think about during this time and our website has never been more important i mean not only is it a place that people can obviously share their records with us um, and it's been that for a while but it's um, one of our main communication tools you know we can put we can post things like, you know, calendar events and, you know, we can share uh, interesting articles and things like that. So our website's particularly been useful during this period. And a few years back, we started to get into social media initially with Facebook. We've, you know, got quite a big Facebook and Twitter following and we're very happy to sort of, you know, scan through and retweet things. So we're getting, you know, getting a bit of engagement through that. We've just recently set up a, uh, an Instagram account as well. So sharing some of the nice photos that we're able to, uh, to, to get people are sending us and putting those through that as well. So, you know, with those three platforms, I think we're doing a reasonable job as far as social media is concerned. And then a new initiative that we started just that, you know, came on the back of the fact that there were a lot of quizzes going on during the lockdown period. We decided to do a quiz of the month. So we're trying to launch that through our um, on the record each month. It's just a simple 10 question, multiple choice answer um, quiz. Um, some of them are quite hard. So, you know, it's worth having a go, but look out for it. We'll continue to do this over the next few months, maybe years. So another thing we reported on at last year's conference, and we'll continue to do this, is the Covnod grant. Um, we put aside around £5,000, which allows uh, up to 10 uh, £500 uh, recording grants for recorders. And, um, you know, we're really pleased to say that it's still very popular. We've had a lot of people 
contacting us this year you know there seems to be a bit of a theme around trapping this year everything from from mist nets to a lot of camera trapping so things like the red squirrel project in Klokainog, um you know got camera traps for some of their feeding boxes and you know they've been marvelous they've been putting loads of data on because they've actually been for the first time being able to sort of see that data through the through the lens of the of the camera traps and then of course you know Covno grant wouldn't be a Covno grant unless we uh, gave some grants for moth traps it seems to be the most popular thing that people really want from this and you know that's fabulous as well so we'll continue to do that and just to give you a flavour of some of the other things that we've been doing as well, you know, books, microscopes, few people, um, you know, uh, there's a group that we we, um, we sponsored for some binoculars, um, visits to uh, Liverpool Museum and some pin boxes for, for insects, you know, all of these sort of things. We're really interested in doing a whole variety of different things for, for people and you know I'm hoping that next year um, all being well we can continue with the recording grant because we think it's a really good advocate um, for the sort of things that we believe in and we really want to ensure that uh, recorders get the equipment and the support they need to continue to um, you know do their activity of recording and sending us data. I'll come back to this all about people thing. I mean, you know, uh, you saw the shot of us at our Christmas party a couple of years ago, but it's interesting, you know, just focusing on some of the people because these are some of the people that you'll contact if you if you um, if you come to Covnod. You've got a, a whole team of people now working on data management, headed up by Ashling, uh, Catherine, and Jen. And between them, you know, they are the ones that. Uh, sort of pulling all the data together that's sent to us so and they're ensuring the quality of the data that that we've that we've got and, and giving feedback on data and a whole range of things and together they've been really focused over the over the whole of the summer period on invertebrate data data that has uh, has a real use um, for designing better ways of managing triple SIs in particular. And they've been they've been pulling a lot of that data together during this period. So, you know, th they will be the ones, if you're sending data, you'll probably be in contact with them. Additionally, we've got Kathy Worcester, who's worked um, on us with us part time, and she's been looking specifically at consultants data. So data that comes in in report form often to environmental consultants, and she's been mobilizing a lot of that. And then the team wouldn't be complete without these two guys. We've got Richard Gallen, who you often would come across if you attended any of our events. He's also runs all of our inquiries for data as well. So, you know, very valuable um, member of staff and sort of very versatile as well. So you'll, you'll, if you haven't met Richard, you will, I'm sure, in the future. Tim sort of sits in the background. Tim is fantastic. He manages to design and run all of our systems. And, you know, without... Without Tim, we really wouldn't be the Covnod we are today. He's got um, amazing, you know, developments, IT development skills. And, you know, we've we've got some of the best systems, I think, that any record centre would want, really. You know, we've got systems for managing the data and they're so good that even now they're starting to be used by other record centres outside of, uh, of Wales. So one of the things that in that support item, that strategic aim um, was that we would uh, try to head towards the 5 million records mark. So how are we doing with that? Well, um, when we were at last year's conference, um, we were at 3.3 .3 million, you know, really good. We've made some big increases uh, in, the, in the sort of 12 months prior to that. Um, but where are we today? Well, actually, we've uh, we've increased the database by nearly uh, nearly another million, you know, nine hundred thousand. And if you look at the graph, you'll see that you know we've always had this period. Sometimes we've had big increases, and it's sometimes because we've got access to a big data set, or we've we've really focused in on things. And as I say, this year has been the focus on sort of trying to get gather all the invertebrate data that we possibly could. And so we've made a big 26% increase since last year. And, you know, we are heading towards that sort of 5 million mark. I don't know when we're going to get to it, but, you know, it might be, you know, in 2021. 
So how is some of the data coming in? Well, obviously we've still got the sort of tools that people can use. Um, you know, our website, the online recording system, still very popular. A lot of people putting data on, a lot of county recorders using it as their sort of main um, access point for data as well. And the Lert Wales app got gaining more traction as well. You know, we've um, we've got, there's a lot of data going on that way, and you know, it's a really important method for recording in the field. You know, you can stick it on your smartphone, uses its GPS, you know, can add a photo, all of those sort of things. So if you haven't downloaded it already, you can get it from App Store or Google Play and, you know, give it a go, see what you think. And then there's all these other sort of, uh, sort of electronic data set databases, iRecord, BirdTrack, and even the MBN Atlas, you know, we're getting data from all of those sort of areas as well. And, you know, we're having a lot of collaboration with some of these, these groups as well, just making sure that we, we're sort of syncing our data more regularly with one another. But the vast majority of data is still coming into us by spreadsheets. You know, we, we, get, we get, you know, people sending us data, um, and, you know, that sometimes, you know, big, big data sets which go in. And we've also been doing, um, as I said earlier, some of the, the mobilisation of, of data through um, the Cathy Worcester project, where we're actually looking at some of the um, uh, consultants reports and, and trawling through those and, and getting out, lifting out some of the, the, be the best data from those. So this is what our sort of database looks like. You know, if I have looked at this a few years ago, it would have shown something like birds would have been about 5%. It's gradually gone through the roof and become the major, uh, major part of our data, bird, bird data. But just recently, actually, invertebrates, which includes these three species groups here, have all overtaken birds. So they're now the highest proportion of data in that sort of 5 million. And where is some of this data going? Well, you know, one of our major things is to share data with the um, with the Wales reporting database, which is sort of owned and run by the four record centres. Um, and, you know, we're a big contributor, just over four million records going off to that and being able to be shared with all the sorts of partners and public that want to access the data. And we also send about 800,000 records to the MBN Atlas. Um, you know, we're updating that regularly as well. And then if we look at the sort of unique requests, people coming to us for data, this is what we're looking at. Something like around nearly 700 a year. Um, you know, there's a whole range of different uh, types of requests, quite a lot of partnership requests, more so than there ever been, but still quite a lot of commercial requests, academic, public. And we also screen about 230 odd uh, planning lists a year as well for five of the seven local authorities. Now, I wouldn't probably be going anywhere without looking at systems. Systems, you know, have been a really important part of, of Covnod. And uh, this system, Orca, which I spoke about at the last year's conference, is, is sort of gaining a bit of traction. We're really, really doing good things with it. It's currently being used by five record centres across the UK, four of which are in, in England. Uh, and although we're only still using it for limited amounts of the functionality, we hope that we'll be able to do, adopt it quite soon. And in order to do that, we're going to need to actually redesign the online recording system. So here's a few screenshots just to give you a flavour of what it looks like. It's a bit fresher, it's a bit cleaner, and it also gives you a little bit more functionality as well. But we need to get that ready and working before we can fully adopt Orca. So again, this is sort of one of the main screens that you would enter a record. Uh, it's got a fabulous way of searching through the species dictionary. You know, if you put like a common name like sparrow in, there's all sorts of different sparrow type connotations, you know, fungi, birds, insects. So, you know, it just gives you a, a quicker way of finding which species you're really interested in. I'll just switch completely and just talk a little bit about some of our finance over the last year. Um, you'll see that everything was up. So our sort of expenses went up just slightly. Our income went up um, a reasonable amount, 7%. 
But, you know, in terms of profitability, we were much higher than we were last year. And that's not unusual because what we have is a situation where, um, you know, we're, we're trying to roll on our profits year on year. But sometimes we spend that and sometimes we go into negative amounts. But we're, we're basically uh, doing quite well um, financially last year. And I think that's going to stand us in good stead for what we think are going to be harder times going ahead this year. So if we look at income for this year, well, um, you know, there's th that's the sort of spread it's it's generally uh, looking at. And, you know, we might see some decreases in certain things like the commercial income goes down. But we're hoping that other things like the ORCA developments that we're doing, the national and local um, uh, sort of um, agreements that we have and projects will all be up slightly. Now we'll all be releasing this in an annual report, which I normally send out just before Christmas. So we gather all the information that we need, put it together and we'll send it out to not only all the conference delegates, but all the people on our mailing list and put it on our website as well. And this year, unlike others where we just had a small section about data, we're going to actually have a, a sort of like a separate data report and that's going to be developed by by Ashling and, and Catherine and they're going to put together sort of an insight to you know what what our data is how how um how we're using it all sorts of things and I'm hoping when we look forward that next year we're going to be able to remove this from our website but you know it's worth just focusing in on the, in on what we say here just just so that you're aware you know that we are still around we continue to operate our service but you may experience changes to our response time please continue to submit records and data requests and if you need you can contact us by email or phone or via twitter or facebook so you know important stuff that you know we've managed to continue to do our work during this really difficult period and we hope that you know even though we'll remove that we'll continue to learn from this experience and do things slightly differently in the future so we're hoping that next year we'll do a lot less of this perhaps a lot less virtual although that's been really useful you know we've we've learned a lot of things and the online courses are still going to be really important to us and we hope that we'll do a bit more of this people getting together this one at Traborth uh, botanic gardens you know great place to train people and just you know have opportunities to share some of the knowledge around between some of the really really skilled recorders in north wales and a few more field meetings as well it'd be fantastic if we can do more of this as well just having an opportunity to see things in the flesh, but also, you know, just to have, a, have some nice social time out in beautiful environments. And we hope that this time next year, we won't just be providing uh, an online conference, we'll actually be face-to-face, uh, -face, maybe back in Krygodon. We might add a bit of um, video content or a whole range of different things to it, but, you know, we hope that we can meet you again, share some nice times together, and, uh, and tell you about what we're doing next year. So thank you for listening. And I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody who supports Covnod.